How are you? I'm just enjoying a comic. The Phantom. Now, The Phantom has been around for decades, and it was adapted to the 1996 box office bomb, The Phantom, starring Billy Zane. Now, this became a cult classic, because that's what The Phantom is. He's a cultural icon. You know, he was raised in the fictitious jungle of Bengala. You know, he hasn't got any superpowers. He just uses his intelligence. Martial arts skills that, well, he learned in the jungle. He was taught how to fight. And he's got two guns. So, yeah, he's a very smart superhero. But, you know, the choice of costume. I guess he does stand out. You know, like, um... I'm sure there's plenty of other versions. And, yeah, there was a TV series, short-lived, and then you read the newspaper and there's still the Phantom being kept alive, but, you know, you can't beat a classic comic. And the Phantom is a classic film, classic example of what works. What does it of course, you can't have anything unless you have an idea. Now, from the mind to the paper and to the movie. Now, there's been plenty of adaptions, mainly from books. You know, Stephen King is the prime use of adaptions. You know, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Stephen King hates this. So, in 97, there was a TV miniseries of The Shining which got some play, praise and flack, but pretty much everybody agrees Stanley Kubrick's The Shining is the adaption. Sure, there's a lot of differences and you get that, but this is a quality horror film. And the TV series, it's guys' moments, you know. Uh, Steve Weber plays Jack Torrance. Rebecca Do um, DeMay, I think that's her name. Or Re Rebecca Mornay. Uh, she plays Wendy, and, um, well, I forget who, who the kid, but people were annoyed by the kid, but, yeah, the TV shows got a lot more to do with the book, but the Stanley Kubrick adaption, it, it's just the best. And speaking of TV miniseries, you got It, which was released in the 90s, well, 1990, and stars Tim Curry, um, the It movie that came out last year. Sure, it was a big box office draw, but this is better. I mean, it, you can't beat Tim Curry's performance. Like... <laughs> the artist. Now, it took an artist to do this cover. You know, like, sure, this is like a basic Photoshop place thing, but it still took an artist to do this. Now, if this was a painting, it, it would be awesome, you know, it's not like the Mona Lisa, which is one of the most famous paintings ever, you know, it, it sort of looks like a, a Picasso, you know, and so the artist who did this graphic, you know, took a picture of Tim Curry, he's wearing the gloves, and then they added, you know, the title of Stephen King's It, and then the photo of the car, and then the print. So, yeah, there's a piece of, of art by the artist. Now, I don't know who did the front cover of this. And then also, like, the script for a film or, or TV show. You know, that, that's an art form, writing, you know. And there's so many different changes and rewrites of a script, just like a book, you know, and, and novels. You know, the... The novelists, the writers, Stephen King is an artist, you know, he, he doesn't paint, but he writes, you know, he, and he doesn't just, like, tell you what's happening, you know, like the phrase, show, don't tell, you know, like he could say, the chalky white face clown with a glowing red nose and, like, a uh, Teeth, like a the aura of a lamp, you know, something like that. Like I've not read any Stephen King 
books. Um, I've seen them around, but you know that is art. Writing is an art. Uh, you got many different forms of writing. You got poetry, and then yeah, you got scripts. You got novels, uh, documentaries. You know, like a documentary is an art form, and so you know, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, uh, Raphael, and Donatello, four Renaissance artists, like the most famous, well known, and their names. Obviously, we use for the names of the Ninja Turtles, and you know that started off as a comic, and and that's an art piece comic. You know, it started off rough, and then got all graphic, and then more colorful. And the animation is an art form. Uh, making a cake, you know, wedding cake, that's an art piece, and there's just so much, so so much forms of art, and there's many different types of artists like. As you know, I do reviews, and it takes time, like any other form of art, to make it easily to understand and construct it like like an art piece. But yeah, we're talking about adaptions, so um, you can adapt, adjust, and come to, and things will be accustomed for you. Like, well, like that clock. Someone designed the clock, and there is. Well, yeah, there's an adaptation about clock. Uh, hickory dickory dock. The mouse went up the clock. The clock struck whatever time it did, and the mouse went back down. And, you know, that that's a nursery rhyme. Again, art, it's in a book, and that's been adapted into cartoons. Uh, there hasn't been an official movie of a mouse going up a clock. That, that could be really awesome, or it could be very boring. Imagine that. Yeah, that... Why, why hasn't Hickory Dickory... Uh, who was Hickory Dickory? Uh, on a dock. Hmm. Hickory sticks. Okay, I, I'm not going any further, you know? Like, see, that, you know, that... Pff, yeah. See, I'm all jambering around like a Picasso. Again, Picasso, great artist, abstract, uh, cubism. So all these paintings are weird, you know, the head might be here. A hand might be there, you know. Or like, um, or like there. See, I'm a Picasso, great artist, and woo! Yeah, the screen. That's another great painting. It's not by Picasso, but it's a very famous painting. Um, the look of that person screaming was the influence of the ghost face mask in Scream, uh, which yeah got adapted on TV. So, and. Well, yeah, that's... And, well, that's it. You know, like, the, the story comes out, it generates fans, and then a studio wants to make an adaption, they change things, it alienates some fans. Like, the critics may love how the movie is, and that's different to what the critics of the book say. And then there's ones who match them up and go, look, it's just as good as the other. The studio wants to make money. And if it doesn't, then it, it, it just goes, it can go either way. You know, the, sometimes you hear about the movie and then you hear about the book or you know about the book like a Ready Player One. You know, that book came out in 2011 and now it's a film adapted by Steven Spielberg, whose last book adaption didn't do so well. You know, and Spielberg, you know, Jaws, the first time a blockbuster, the highest grossing film for two years, and then Star Wars annihilated it, and then, of course, Jurassic Park came out, highest grossing film for four years. So, what happened? Well, and of course, Spielberg, he directed Duel, which is an adaption of a short story that was in a Playboy. So, and that was a, a success. Sure, it didn't reach the heights of Jaws or Jurassic Park, but it launched his career. But yeah, the BFG wasn't a big hit, so will Ready Player One be a big hit like Jaws or Jurassic Park? I mean, there's so much in that. You know, that took a lot. It's got all these characters. It's got uh, Speed Racer, The Interceptor, um, Kit from Knight Rider, uh, 
Ecto-1, the Time Machine, Iron Giant, so many characters. It's like fan service. It's like it, if they took all characters in that and made a big painting, awesome. So it will divide, you know. The studio wants to make money. Uh, the fans want to be pleased. So if you read the book, I've never, I didn't even know it was a book. Like this is like the ultimate video game crossover multi universe Ready Player One is the single most biggest shared multi-universe film ever. So how is it going to go? Will it divide? Will the critics have enemies with the fans and other critics? Who knows? All I know is I'll scare you later.